Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Pentecost service. Our featured preacher today is Bishop Devadar, and the district superintendents have organized our service for us today. But I want to open with some announcements and some prayers from our local congregation, and then we will uh, turn it over to uh, the various people from our, conf our district and our conference who have put together our service for us today. Uh, for some announcements, uh, next Sunday we will observe communion. As I've mentioned in the newsletter and last Sunday, this is a, a change for me, something that's uh, something I never thought I would probably do, but these are extraordinary times. The Methodists in extraordinary times have found ways to be able to do this, the important ministry that needs to be done. And Bishop Devadar has granted uh, the pastors of our conference the ability to do communion uh, during the time of this pandemic while we are worshiping online. The liturgy next Sunday will be one that you are familiar with, uh, but we will be adapting it for our uses here, our purposes here. So if you would bring with you a piece of bread, um, it could be um, from a loaf of bread, it could be a, from a, a loaf that you might have from a local grocery store, something you make at home, uh, but bring with you a piece of bread. I'll bring with you, if you can, some grape juice, um, would be ideal, um, and then have that with you uh, for the service, and then we will uh, use that, of course, when we get to the communion portion. If you have any questions about that, let me know. We'll also be talking about that at worship committee this week when they meet. Um, as requested by Bishop Devadar, also we have formed, and also through the uh, action of the Church Council here, uh, following up on that request, we have formed a group to examine what would be involved in reopening our church building. Uh, the group is charged with determining whether we should reopen, and if so, how and when. And also gathering the information we would need to make uh, that decision, or at least to make recommendations to our church council. There's a lot more as we've begun to do that work, there's a lot more to it than I think, I uh, certainly more than I realized uh, in terms of considering health and safety. Uh, and I'm highly recommending people go to our conference website at neumc.org. And right on the front page, there is a link, one of the main headlines, there is a link to the page that has all of the information, both for these task groups, but also for anyone else who would like to know. They also have links to the various state CDC pages and other information for churches to consider. I highly recommend you go there to look at that. Those links are also in your June newsletter and we're in last week's uh, e-news as well that, uh, that Bobby sends out. If you would like, please do send that to me and I, uh, or send a request to me and I'll make sure that you can get those links if you do not have them or we can make uh, some copies of at least some of that material for you. Uh, just a couple of updates on some other conference uh, news. Camp Mechuana and our various conference camps and retreat centers have suspended their, their summer uh, work those camps and retreats will not happen this summer. It was a very difficult decision, uh, and they have uh, recommended to us their process as well for use in our churches. Different churches across this conference, of course, will have uh, will be in different situations and will uh, come to a variety of conclusions. Also, the New England conference session uh, in person has been canceled. In its place, there'll be a one a one half-day clergy session, a half-day laity session, and a one-day joint session. Those, uh, the, those happening in the clergy session in June, the laity session in September, and the joint session uh, in October, I believe. Um, but if you can pray for those ministries of our conference, especially our camps and retreat centers, as they grapple with how to do ministry without their summer programs. Our building continues to progress, and we've now, uh, in the sanctuary in particular, in this uh, work that has been ongoing these last several weeks, uh, the current work is refinishing the sanctuary floor, and because of, particularly because of some materials that will need uh, ample time to dry, we expect that will take at least a couple of weeks to do, uh, perhaps somewhat longer. Uh, you'll hear also a mention today of offerings and just want to encourage you, first of all, to thank you for your offerings that have uh, continued to come in and continue to make possible our ministries and to, to continue to use those 
those means, whether you mail yours into the church, uh, whether you use EFT, or remember too, we have a, 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 an application that you can use, as well as a, an 800 number through Vanco. So let us know if you would like to utilize one of those different means that you're not currently using, but you'd like to, uh, we can help you uh, let the church office know or let Tamara Wilcox know. So as we come to a time of prayer here before we move into the rest of the worship, if you would please keep the following persons in your prayers or situations. If you would please pray for Debbie and Lou Sharp, for Darlene Nelder, for Sheila Bellier, for Dave and Marsha DeMerchant, for Bob Sear, for Emily Robin and James Stewart, for Phyllis Sykes, for Leona Mishu, for Glenn Taggett, for Megan Lombard, for George and Joyce Noor, and they are making their way home. So our prayers as they, as they travel home and continue their recovery. Also prayers for Dale and Betty Fowler, for the family of Melvin Griffin, he died this past week, and services for him are to be on June 8th at 11 o'clock at the Northern Maine Veterans Cemetery. Uh, Melvin is the father of Melanie and the grandfather of Erica, so keep them pleased in your prayers. We also pray, we talked about them, but didn't explicitly name them. We pray for all those families who have lost the members to the armed services over the years for the sacrifices they've made as we continue to remember in this week following Memorial Day. We pray for all those affected in one way or another by COVID-19, whether that is uh, through someone you know who has died or been very sick, whether that has been by uh, businesses that are affected by this or other uh, means of livelihood or people struggling with the changes to our everyday life. So as we pray for cures and vaccinations and new ways of being able to deal with what all is before us. We remember especially those uh, deeply affected. We pray for those uh, in anguish over another person of color uh, killed when there, uh, when there would have been another way to approach a uh, difficult situation. This one in the Twin Cities over in Minnesota. Uh, but it has touched a nerve across our country. And please pray for all those uh, affected and that we might overcome the systemic issues that divide our races and, and particularly in the ways we contribute. Just particularly significant on this Pentecost Sunday when the Spirit came, even though people spoke many languages, even pe though people came from many different places in life, all received that Spirit and all were welcome to follow in that Spirit's way. Would you please pray with me? Holy and gracious God, we do thank you for all these prayers, those that have been named aloud, and those that we pray in our hearts. We ask that as we celebrate on this Pentecost Sunday, as we celebrate the coming of your Holy Spirit and the birthday of our church, that we recognize the ongoing work of that very same Spirit and that we continue to celebrate all the ways that you uh, enliven our lives. Pick us up when we are down and encourage us along life's way. We thank you for all the gifts you give, and we pray that by that same Holy Spirit, you will inspire us to use those gifts to help one another grow in faith, to grow in offering your love in this world and making this world a better place, something closer to the creation that you created us all to be. So for all these prayers and so many more that we will pray in your son's name, we do so today with the power of that very Holy Spirit, now and forevermore, amen. I invite you now to enjoy the, the worship that has been put together by our sisters and brothers from all across New England. Uh, you'll see many different pastors and lay people from all over the six states of our New England Conference. So let us worship together and enjoy the presence of God with us today, this Pentecost Sunday.
standing in body or in spirit for our call to worship this morning. When I raise up my arms, please join me in saying, stand up, stand up for Jesus. When the wind rushes into the room, stand, stand up, up, stand, stand up, up for, for Jesus. Jesus. When your hearts are set on fire but not consumed, stand, stand up, up, stand, stand up, up for, for Jesus. Jesus. When love is spoken and understood in every language, stand, stand up, up, stand up, up for Jesus. Jesus. Stand up, stand up, like Peter and the eleven did so long ago. For the sake of the children and the elderly, for the sake of the least and the uh, last among us, for the sake of all who call upon God's saving name, in an age of wonders, signs, and darkness, stand, stand up, stand, stand up for, for Jesus. Jesus. Would you please remain standing in body or in spirit as we sing our opening hymn, number 21. 17, Spirit of God.
Good morning, everyone. I'd love to share with you a prayer written by our bishop. Merciful God, we stand in the midst of sickness, death, and grief. We see people without jobs standing in mile-long food lines. We witness the unjust distribution of resources and racial discrimination. We watch healthcare providers exhausted and overwhelmed, farmers with no market for their crops. We wonder, have they, have we been abandoned? Jesus promised that we would not be orphans, that you would send your spirit, that because he lives, we shall live, that you are not gone from us, that we have not been deserted, that you abide with us and in us. O oh God, our help, hear our prayer, to love you, to keep your great commandment to love others, to know you reveal through your through our loving acts, to see you here and now, with us and in us forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and brings with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Today's scripture is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, and I would invite you to grab your favorite Bible and follow along as we hear the scripture read or signed by individuals from around the New England Conference. 五旬节到了，门徒都聚集在一处。忽然，从天上有响声下来，好像一阵大风吹过，充满了他们所坐的屋子。Todos ficaram cheios do Espírito Santo e passaram a falar em outras línguas, segundo o Espírito lhe concedia que falassem. Ora, estavam habitando em Jerusalém judeus, homens piedosos, vindos de todas as nações debaixo do céu. Quando, pois, se fez ouvir aquela voz, afluiu a multidão que se possuiu de perplexidade, porquanto cada um os ouvia falar na sua própria língua. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. <laughs> Apostle Chile or Drupa son, ye were Rupa Blabwissy son, or the Blabwissy Tanquin, they are must say, Kaka Daka. Oh, pray, my wow, we give what say, Green Maggie, give what chain chain, my bow, give what da. Demo, they are cleaning ye. Can you give me any ma, wa, ye blind, da. Waso wandi e nan, omo gripo uruo, anye gripo bambay. Alors Pierre, se presentant avec les onces, eleva la voix, et leur parla en ces termes. Homme juif, et vous tous qui se jonez à Jérusalem, sachez ceci, et prêtez l'oreille à mes paroles. Ces gens ne sont pas livrés comme vous le supposez, car c'est la troisième heure du jour.
a loka nitsi n sozek ka sonka ta noli wika sonkawa a moka waski dak anakonaknia aida gitsombak ta behenemak adotsi zogina nia gagin hodunia ta agamaujik nik onotsimo wogan ta megamiknia de bask hodi ganak spemki ta gadakina bagakan ta maskweda ta awan el sol dejará de alumbrar y la luna se pondrá roja como si estuviera bañada en sangre. Esto pasará antes de que llegue el maravilloso día en que juzgaré a este mundo. Pero yo salvaré a todos los que me reconozcan como su Dios. Let us pray. Long awaited Spirit of God, your people are scattered in the valley of the world, where songs of hope and cries for healing echo down the canyons carved deep to the ends of the earth. Windy Spirit of God, blow through the burdens and brokenness we carry, and lift up our eyes to the strength of the hills, to the stronghold of the mountains to the holy canopy of sky above. Fiery Spirit of God, ignite us with your highest calling, a vision for your world where righteousness is right in us. Fluent Spirit of God, place in us your articulate mission for your kingdom where justice is not just for us but where justice just is for all. Ever-present Spirit of God, come anew to this place. Make the ground upon which we stand holy. Put our feet on the upward path of glory. Help us stand. Help us stand. Help us stand. Amen. A clergy friend of mine shared a story about a church that used a standard bulletin for every funeral that included the Apostles' Creed. They would simply change the name of the deceased person each time. Apparently, two women, Mary and Edna, died within weeks of each other because the bulletin had just been used the secretary was confident that the format was fine so she simply chose to ask the computer to change each mary to edna in the bulletin again because Mary's funeral had been so recent, neither she nor the pastor saw any reason to double check the bulletin. However, on the day of the funeral, when everyone was about to say the Apostles' Creed, the bulletin embarrassed everyone because it's read, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Edna. We laugh, but sometimes our methods and routines become impersonal and thoughtless. I'm sharing this incident on this great day of the church because for many, Pentecost has become an ordinary event. Some don't want to talk about it because they think that Pentecost is the property of the Holy Rollers churches. 
if however if we really want to see and understand the power of the holy spirit we need to go to acts chapter 2 it was the first appearance of the disciples of jesus along with the newly elected apostle to replace judas the election went well the apostles joined the crowd which was already shaped by the power of the holy spirit and there was wonder and awe some really not understanding what was happening some were really clueless in the midst of that peter standing with the 11 raised his voice and addressed them what did peter and disciples do they did not keep silent they seized the opportunity stood up and preached with authority and reminded them it was not a joke but the fulfillment of the prophecy of joel friends let us pause and ask what it means to us to stand up for jesus right now it means that we are to witness with the power of the holy spirit telling the story with excitement to a world which needs to share the power of the holy spirit the gift of the church in a powerful way what does it mean to stand up for jesus it means we are to witness for our lord and savior jesus christ who was ascended into heaven to be with our creator god but who gave us the holy spirit what does it mean to share the story of the holy spirit to a world where majority of the people are still leaving behind closed doors due to covid-19 where people are being asked to be physically distanced from one another for fear of contacting the virus what does it mean to stand up for jesus christ led by the holy spirit it means we are to witness to a world where a young innocent african american Ahmed Arbery was murdered as he enjoyed a jog and it had to take a public protest to even register a case against the people responsible for killing him how do we respond as christians when we hear horror stories like the one about 26 years year old african american brianna taylor who was murdered in her own house by law enforcement officials do we keep silent in the name of maintaining a false peace or do we stand up and cry out for justice as faithful baptized christians the famous christian theologian Karl Barth was correct when he said take your bible and take your newspaper and read both but interpret newspapers from your bible perhaps if he had lived in our day he would have said but interpret whatsapp twitter facebook television and newspapers from your bible friends 
Karl Barth was correct. As baptized Christians, as people of the Pentecost, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we cannot live in two worlds. Though the world wants us to do so. Standing up for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit means we are not in charge of ourselves. We are moved by the power of the Holy Spirit every moment of our lives. It is not our ego, pride, superiority or racism that controls us anymore. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that moves us and energizes us so that we may keep surprising the world with hope. Here, I would like to borrow a quote from Salman Rushdie. The only people who see the whole picture are the ones who step out of the frame. I love it. Though it was quoted at a different context, this is very appropriate for us baptized Christians who are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when you and I are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, we cannot neatly frame ourselves into our theological presuppositions, biases, and ideas. If we do that, we cannot see the whole picture. For us to see the whole picture, we need to get out of the frame. This is what Christ did, isn't it? Isn't it true that he refused to be framed by religious thoughts and superstitions of the day so that he could allow others to see, learn and taste as he ministered unto the questionable people of his day, as he touched and healed those who were distanced and marginalized by the society. This is how the people of the Pentecost brought gospel to the world. This is how the apostles went into different parts of the world, not fearing death in order to bring Easter message to the people in other parts of the world with the power of the Pentecost. However, through the centuries of the journeys of the people of faith, we have realized that it is the willingness of these people to get out of the frame, which has enabled churches to make disciples for Jesus Christ. Shall we take time to look at the people who have crossed boundaries of comfort to make more disciples for Jesus Christ. Friends, as we celebrate the birthday of the church, we are challenged to ask what it means to stand up for Jesus even with in the midst of COVID-19. No matter how frightening the situation is. Prophet Joel and first apostles taught us to sing songs like William and Gloria Gaither's Because He Lives. Yes, when they realized in the 1960s Gloria was pregnant, they were afraid of what kind of world they were bringing their child into, knowing things were so uncertain. In the midst of their fear, though they knew the power of Jesus and composed this beautiful hymn, which is still 
touching many because he lives. When the Holy Spirit beckons us to stand up for Jesus, not to satisfy our e egos, but to glorify our Creator God, wherever we are, in our schools, homes or workplaces, we need to be ready to stand up to witness to God, the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. This may cost us our jobs or our security. This might mean standing with colleagues to whom an injustice is being done by the boss who is also your boss. In moments like this, do we keep quiet as Christians or do we show our holy dissatisfaction and fight for justice? Situations like this could cost us our job or we could be distanced by our family and best friends for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. No one has touched me as powerfully as Rachel, a teenager who followed Jesus and demonstrated her Christian discipleship, even at gunpoint when she was massacred along with others in Columbine school shootings. God may not call us to be martyrs like Rachel, but God may challenge us to be young activists like two sisters, Asha and Gia Kirkpatrick, age 12 and 10. Like any children, they loved their cereal. However, when they realized the cereals they were eating were prepared using palm oil. And to produce palm oil, Indonesian rainforests and its inhabitants such as orang tunas are destroyed. They stopped eating their cereals and asked others to sign their petitions to the management of the Kellogg company. Because of their decision, Kellogg changed its policy. Friends, as we celebrate Pentecost today, may we pray the Holy Spirit will hijack our church so that we celebrate the visions of the young and the dreams of the world. As painful and fearful as COVID 19 is, God is calling us to do a new thing because like Bill and Gloria, we know in our hearts and minds, he lives, our Redeemer lives. Because we know the resurrected Christ has already blessed us and gifted us with the Holy Spirit. May we refuse to be framed by any theology, structure, or physical guidelines that try to put us in a frame which prohibits us from being a church which is molded and shaped by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know that the Holy Spirit cannot be framed by any structures, ecclesiology, theology, or financial assurance. Amen.
believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us by using the language of our hearts. Porque tú eres la reina y el poder y la gloria para siempre. Amén. On this day of Pentecost, it must have been bewildering for all the people gathered when the Holy Spirit arrived. In a different way, this is a bewildering time for us, and the Holy Spirit is with us right here, right now. It's our spiritual disciplines that help us recognize God's presence through this time. Prayer and meditation, showing hospitality to one another, worship, service, and of course our giving too. Our generous giving has a way of transforming us. We give thanks for the reminding of God's steadfast presence and other blessings through our tithes and offerings. You're invited to take this time now to offer a sign of your thanks and trust in God for the work of your church and congregation with our offering. Will you pray with me? Holy One, we know that everything we have comes from you. We want to be good stewards of that which you've given us. And on this day of Pentecost, we ask your blessing upon our offerings. Lead us to put them to work in your service so that they may be used to relieve suffering, to bring hope to your people, and to remind us, all of us, of our oneness in you. Amen. Say, Our Father. Our Father, all of heaven roars your name. Sing louder. Let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. Our
I would invite you to stand as we sing together number 378, Amazing Grace. together amazing grace amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost Join me in our benediction prayer. May God give you the grace to never sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. The blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us now and remain with us this day and always.